So for those who don't don't know, uh, I post you know the diet composition um, after each blood test, right? So at least eight times per year, people are seeing what my average diet composition is, and then I go into full detail all the foods that I consumed, and then were there any cheat days, right? So what works for me, uh, and you know, in cheat days where I'm eating you know some amount of junk because I if I don't then that can set up a binge historically and for me at least as someone who's prior to the past four years someone who struggled with uh being able to be as lean as possible and uh you know trying to be calorie restricted so i struggled with that until about four years ago when i finally put it all together and how much you know what volume of food how much fiber how much exercise and then that almost completely eliminated well i should say completely eliminated these basically weekly binges where i'd have like a Friday or and or Saturday, where I would just eat like, you know, a few thousand calories over my maintenance and then fast Saturday, Sunday, you know, or eat very little food over the next few days. But that's basically a binge purge cycle. It wasn't healthy for me mentally or physically. I hated that I was stuck in that lifestyle. So anyway, four years ago, I was able to break out of that. And I don't ever want to go back to that. So Knowing that if I completely avoided junk food on that journey, that would eventually lead to a quote unquote binge where I'm just eating everything. Can't stop. Don't want to stop. Feels good. But then obviously feels bad afterwards. Um, so if I completely eliminate junk food, that's a bad thing. So after every blood test, immediately after the first thing, first thing I'm eating is whatever I've been thinking about for the 50 days in between tests, you know, and it's usually, you know, peanut butter mixed with chocolate, or it can be pizza, whatever it is. And then I generally don't pay any attention to macros and micros, which I try to hit those targets every day based on their correlations with uh, biomarkers. So the that last two to four days, including a little bit of cheat, not paying much attention to the overall rigid structure, which I enjoy. I'm, you know, I'm not saying I don't enjoy it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't. So that's worked for four years where uh, exactly sticking to calorie intake, the calorie intake goals that I've met, uh, that I've you know uh, uh, targeted um, within a very small range, nothing like you know thousand calories over two thousand three thousand, none of that. So uh, for the first time, I cracked. I cracked in four years. That was immediately following this last blood test, which on which was on February fourth, and this story will be in the after the March you know, March 18th blood test, you know, when I do the diet composition video. So this is for anyone watching, for anyone who's made it to this portion of the video, you're getting early access to my struggles where, uh, you know, I'm not always quote unquote perfect on my, on my approach. Um, so yeah. So on the day, I don't know, maybe I can share, I can share screen so we can see. All right. So, so this is February 4th. So that's the day of blood testing. And this day was normal. When I, when I say normal, you know, it's uh, immediately after blood testing, I, you know, I pre-made the day before chocolate uh, with some uh, grape jelly and peanut butter, homemade Reese's peanut butter cup with some grape jelly, just to see how that tastes. Wasn't bad. And then if we scroll down, actually, let me, uh, yeah. So if we scroll down, you can see calories on that day, 2,300. That's essentially around what I do, what I normally do on a workout day. So on a workout day, I, I'm, I'm usually 22, 2300. On a non-workout day, it's uh, 2050 is the target, 2100, or somewhere in that ballpark, a little bit more calories on the workout day. So after blood testing, I work, did the workout, had a little bit of junk. And then if you look at my macros and micros, I mean, even just focusing on fiber, this is pretty much half of what my usual fiber intake would be, but I'm not paying any attention to it because it's a quote unquote cheat day. So then where the problem happened is Usually I'll make my junk and then uh, get, get rid of it, throw it away immediately. It, I don't keep it in the house. Uh, and that's just what works for me. I can't keep any of it in the house. It, 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 it's just bad news. I'll start thinking about it and then it, right? So the next day came and uh, February 5th, and this is where the, the proverbial hit the fan, right? So this is going down to calories, uh, 5,700. And uh, just to put that into perspective, my, my maintenance, my body weight maintenance is 21 to 2200 calories. So that's 3,500 calories in excess. I basically ate, you know, almost three days of food in one day. And it was, uh, you know, I had, you know, cookie dough. I mean, 
I was, I was going to make some, uh, I made some, you know, some cookies, but then after I ate, ate the cookies that were on my list, for whatever reason, I was just like, I feel like eating more. And, uh, I went off like, you know, eating more chocolate chips, e eating the cookie dough raw. And I know people are going to be like, ah, it's salmon, salmonella and all the other things. I, I ate it raw still here. Uh, I, ate, you know, the grape jelly and peanut butter, I was just scooping everything, eating everything basically in sight. So then, okay, it, it's done. You know, I can't fix, I can't undo what was done. All I can do is learn from it. I don't intend on doing this going forward uh, where I'm just going to make my stuff, get rid of it. And then, you know, I can basically only eat the junk that I pre-planned. Um, and, and a trigger may be the cookie cookie dough where uh, I can't keep that any of that around where that, that may have also pushed me over the edge knowing that I had extra cookie dough to include for like a third cheat day on a third cheat day. And I, my brain was like, no, just eat it. <laughs> and that stuff. Is so, yeah. So, so, so with that in mind, what did I do afterwards? Right now, this is where it can get tricky, right? Because knowing that I have a history of binge purge and I don't mean binge purge when I'm puking, the purge is basically extreme fasting. It, it, yeah. It, extreme binge fast. Um, so on the next day, on the sixth, I mean, you can see this is my diet the next day. It's almost no calories, 600 calories. Okay. So that's uh, pretty much good news. Cause now I was 3,500 calories in excess. I consumed 600. That's about 1500 under what I would usually eat. So we can subtract 1500 from 3,500. Now I'm 2000 calories over what I did. Not too bad. That's half a pound of fat. Okay. But then I didn't just, you know, you know, uh, do that for one day. I did that also for a second day. You know, you can see the list is very short. I mean, just to fast forward that, you know, to a week, a week later, if you look at my list, it's much longer for all the foods that I generally include. So to see, you know, very little food on that day, and this was a thousand calories. So now I'm 1100 under what I would usually eat. So subtract the 1100 from 2000. Now I'm about 900, 1000 over what I would normally eat over that four day period. So could I have pushed that another day and then had another thousand calorie day? And basically my binge has been negated by, uh, you know, course correcting with calories. I could, and I've done that in the past and I've really pushed it out, but historically that's binge purge for me and I can't get out of that cycle. And I didn't want to do that. So the following day, it was essentially pretty close to my usual diet. Um, you can see calories are, about 2000. I generally, I'm not, I'm not below 2000. So that's maybe a hundred calories under, but you know, it was pretty close to a normal diet of all the things that I eat. Um, am I worried about now being plus 800 or plus thousand? Not really. Uh, I was planning on having my calorie intake for the, you know, around 50 day period in between blood tests being a little higher anyway. So my average calorie intake for the 49 day period before the February 4th test was 2120 per day. Right now it's currently 2176. I'm planning on aiming for 2150. So I'm not too far away from that. Even with the, you know, 5,700 calorie binge. Um, so, so that, yeah, so that was the experience. I'm not happy about it, uh, but I did it. I take full responsibility. I am planning on it never happening again. Um, you know, it's just not good for long-term health. I don't think it'll impact the biomarkers being 45 days away from a blood test, but, um, yeah, so that was my experience. So, uh, first of all, I have to really, um, I'm, I'm odd that you not only, I mean, even in the midst of the binge that you still recorded every gram is stunning. Like I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Like I, I've had the same kind of habits. Uh, many years ago, I was doing something at the time it was called the zone diet or so. And so I'd be eating like a restricted amount of calories and stuff. And the way I would do it, one of the things I would do is I'd have these zone bars, which are pretty tasty and they're 30%, 30%, uh, protein, 30% fat, 40% carbohydrates. And I have all my favorite flavors and I have them in boxes behind my desk. <laughs> and I was not as smart as you. I didn't get them out of the house. And so I don't know, like once every other week or so, I would just like get ravenous at the end of the day and like eat five or 10 or 15 of these zone bars and put an extra, you know, 1,000, 2,000 calories on top of my very tight diet. So I, I really can relate. 